In 2008, I was framed for murder and wrongfully convicted by the office of Kamala Harris, sentenced 50 to life in prison. It took me five and a half years to ultimately get back in the trial due to prosecutorial misconduct. And it took me another year to go to my second trial, to which I was vindicated by a jury of my peers. When I got convicted, Kamala Harris was in the courtroom. When I got sentenced, 50 to life in prison, Kamala Harris was in the courtroom. When I looked back and I seen her, she was smiling. And she did that stupid ass laugh that she do right now. <laughs> this shit ain't funny. Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. And today I got a great video to share with you guys, man. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it, man. So James O'Keefe just released a bombshell revelation about Kamala Harris's campaign. An undercover journalist from O'Keefe Media captured footage of Kamala's campaign compliance manager making some shocking admissions. Check this out. I like Kamala Harris, but I don't think she'd win this year. Meet Joyce DeSears. He, him the compliance manager to the DNC. What's your official title? Compliance manager. My specific job, like the end all be all of my job is reporting to the government how much the DNC raised and where it spent its money. Saying that she doesn't have any accomplishments to speak of. She's weirdly unpopular. She doesn't have any accomplishments to speak of because she's vice president. Joyce DeSears revealed how the DNC gains donations and what tactics they use including just telling donors what they want them to hear. When I was doing finance, like fundraising, we just call it finance and politics, you kind of tell a donor what they want to hear. Which is what? Whatever they want to hear. DeSears admits to the OMG citizen journalist American Swiper, you kind of tell a donor just what they want to hear. You, you, you just put on a performance button, a little show, right? You just put on a performance for them, a little show, right? So basically we're just feeding into their fantasy. Yeah, which you ever met a rich person? They want their fantasy to be, well, you know, fed it. So we just take their money and we like smile and nod our head, but like we don't really take their opinions into our strategy. 100%. So some donors are holding back on writing their checks because they think that the campaign's not doing well. Mm -hmm. Why would they think that? A lot of people think we should attack Trump more. We should attack Trump more? Yeah. Do you feel like our strategy has always been just like, take their money and tell them what they want to hear? Yeah, that's all All right, so he's caught admitting that the campaign strategy is essentially to take their money and tell them whatever it is that they want to hear. This is a stunning confession about how they handle donors. Promising whatever it takes to get the funds, regardless of the campaign's actual direction or success. It would be an awful shame if every major DNC donor saw this video. But anyway, let's continue. I like Kamala Harris, but I don't think she'd win this year. Why? She's weirdly unpopular. I think a lot of that is racism and misogyny. Um, and the vice president's so easy to attack, right? She doesn't have any accomplishments to speak of because she's vice president. She doesn't make laws. Her job is to become president if Joe Biden does. And a lot of the time, the vice president, whoever they are, gets sent to do the hard stuff. So yeah. So why do you think she's constantly getting attacked? Um, honestly, if you look at the stuff people attack her with, it is a bunch of racist, sexist bullshit. Like, it's just stuff you wouldn't say about a man. People call her Gitsy. Isn't it hilarious that as the Kamala campaign calls J.D. Vance weird, her own DNC manager says that Kamala is weirdly unpopular. How ironic. But yeah, anyone who's been paying attention would understand exactly why that is. But of course, he chalks it up to racism and misogyny. That's all they got. The media and the Democrats always play the same old game. When they can't defend their candidates' records, they cry racism and misogyny. He says... Kamala Harris is weirdly unpopular, and yes, she's unpopular because she's fought to keep evidence for people who were innocent out of court just so she could have a California with the most incarcerations of all time. She's ruined countless lives as attorney general there, and I mean, flat out, she's just an evil individual. However, he hits the nail on the head with her accomplishments, though. 
I mean, she's just filling in if Joe kills over. And let's face it, that is a real possibility at this point. And maybe we will get a President Kamala before November. Imagine that. But she has no accomplishments. The whole Harris campaign is one big psyop. She is the least popular VP of history or in all time in this country. And somehow they are pretending like she is some rock star. You can't make this stuff up. You just can't. And neither Kamala Harris nor any Democrat can win in 2024, but they have no option but to go with her. They're kind of in a rock and a hard place at this point. Is saying what everyone else is apparently thinking. Even Vice President Harris's own Democratic employees are acknowledging she cannot win due to her unpopularity and lack of accomplishments. Recall the video that we did, I did undercover, sitting across the table from someone in the executive office of the White House. Same thing well, with Kamala Harris, she's not popular, but you can't remove the first black lady to be vice president from the goddamn presidential ticket. She can't keep black staff. They quit on her in mass. Just a short time ago, Vice President Kamala Harris launched her presidential bid and raised $81 million in 24 hours, according to an Axios report. Joyce DeSeris revealed how the DNC gains donations and what tactics they use, including just telling donors what they want them to hear and playing into what DeSeris calls Democratic donors fantasies in order to get more money. When I was doing finance, like fundraising, we just call it finance and politics, you kind of tell a donor what they want to hear. Which is what? Whatever they want to hear. They tell Wait, you what how do you they tell you what they want to hear, and then they say, "What do you think?" Like, give me an example. You know, we really need to spend more attacking Trump. Sure. You need to get up on stage and you need to talk about all the things Trump has sent. And then you say, "I completely agree." And President Biden is um, going to be doing that. Here's three examples where he did it. And if we have 25k, we can spend money on making sure that happens. Can you give 25k? And he's like, "I don't know." And you're like, well, you know, Biden actually has an event coming up. Um, I could relay your concerns to him. You know what? Yeah, I'll give 50K. Okay. But then Donut says, you're doing way too many TV ads, you know? Like, TV doesn't change votes, you know? But nobody watches cable anymore. Anyway. Well, that's why we're hiring so many organizers in all these states. But organizers cost money. And so just a single organizer's salary is $41,000 a year. And we gotta hire a lot if we really want to beat Trump and be competitive and say, what state are you from again? Florida? We need to really have a lot of organizers if we want to beat Trump in Florida. In fact, we're opening up a field office right there in Tampa. It's going to cost a lot. Can you give a hundred K? Dang, you're good. You just I'm ready to like write a check to you. <laughs> you tell people exactly what they want to hear though. DeSears admits to the OMG citizen journalist American Swiper, you kind of tell a donor just what they want to hear. You just put on a performance for them, a little show, right? Do you feel like our strategy has always been just like take their money and tell them what they want to hear? Yeah, that's politics. That's what? That's politics. That's politics? So we just take their money and we like smile and nod our head, but like we don't really take their opinions into our strategy? 100%. So basically we're just feeding into their fantasy. Yeah. Which, you ever met a rich person? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That's their MO. Why? They want to be, they want their fantasy to be, you know, fed into. You, you, you just put on a performance for them, a little show, right? Judith Butler calls this a uh, phantasm. Phantasm. Yeah, it's um, this kind of like cognitive dissonance of like just imagining something that truly isn't. So some donors are holding back on writing their checks because they think that the campaign's not doing well? Mm -hmm. Why would they think that? Know, a lot of people think we should attack Trump more. We should attack Trump more? Yeah. Do you feel like our strategy has always been just like, take their money and tell them what they want to hear? Yeah, that's all things. So, there you have it. Desir sings like a canary about how he uses facades to play to donors' fantasies utilizing deception, it's on full display over at the DNC. But it begs the question, what else is the DNC doing to trick their donors or voters? How many other people agree with this man? In fact, how many people disagree with him, really? And why are they telling donors what they want to hear? Why aren't they telling them the truth? Why are they performing these bait and switch techniques? On top of all of this, our OMG American Swiper asked Joyce DeSeris about President Biden and his struggles with donors, 
which corroborates reports in the media that have stated Biden was in fact struggling with campaign donations. So do you think it was a mistake that President Biden agreed to debate Trump? No, because I think it was a good thing on Biden's part because he would have had to debate Trump anyway, just politically, he would have had to. I mean, I just imagine how he does in the debates gonna influence how donors decide whether they're gonna, they're gonna continue to back him, right? For sure. Yeah, we've had people who like haven't wanted to give us money because they think the campaign is not doing well enough or Biden isn't being strong enough. We reached out to the DNC for comment and to DeSeers for comment, and we received this. Now, what's interesting is the DNC did try contacting our fearless OMG American Swiper, including sending her this postcard asking her not to do any more online swiping. The postcard was in English and Chinese. We're not sure why they invoked an Asian racial undertone in contacting our journalist. They also made anonymous phone calls in the middle of the night to her. This all happened as the publication date of our groundbreaking story on the DNC approach. It appears as though these were attempts to intimidate or try to stop this report from being aired. But here at OMG, we are undeterred, always holding those in power accountable. Yeah, so this is the campaign strategy, but I'm not surprised. DeSers admitted donors are hesitant to give money because they think the campaign isn't doing well enough or Biden isn't strong enough. Flat out says that donors are holding back their checks because they see the writing on the wall. The campaign is a sinking ship and they're desperately trying to keep it afloat with lies and deception. Democrats have been lying to their base for years, promising the moon and delivering absolutely nothing but chaos and failure. They've got no real policies, no real accomplishments, just empty promises and deception. So I'm not surprised they need to lie to donors to get money. This all just proves that the Democrats are in complete disarray. They know they can't win on merit, so they resort to deception, race baiting, fear mongering. Kamala Harris is a disaster and even her own team knows it. How much more evidence do we need that the Democrats are a sinking ship? They're scrambling to hold on power, but they're out of touch with reality and with the American people. Kamala Harris has no accomplishments. She's unpopular and the Democrats only strategy is to lie and cheat, but we're not falling for it. We see through their BS and we're not going to let them get away with it. But at the same time, this is something that no one should be shocked of, or this is something that no one should be shocked at hearing. They're throwing ish against the wall, hoping something sticks with the Harris campaign, and they're not even really campaigning. This is just more proof that the Kamala hype is all propaganda. The bottom line here is that the Democrats are in panic mode They've got a candidate who's wildly unpopular and a strategy built on deceit. They're trying to hoodwink the American people with claims of racism and misogyny while hiding the fact that Kamala Harris has no real accomplishments and no real policies to run on. But let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Consider joining the ARP family. It supports me, the team, the channel. It gives us the ability to do what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I appreciate each person that has joined the ARP family thus far. God bless each and every one of you all. Keep God first in your life. Stay prayed up. And I'm going to catch up with you all next time. Peace.